today, I like to check out about phasers. Biophasers. That's exactly what I always thought of when someone's talking about phasers. I don't know what exactly was thought at MA, but phaser is now the name for automated parameters at the Grand MA3. The new phaser editor is a powerful tool for programming dynamic effects. In this video, I will talk about basic functions of phasers and about phasers that are created from presets. A multitude of steps can be used and easily edited with a graphical user interface. I will also give a short introduction to the tool that can be used to precisely set the crossfades. Basically, you should recognize that a phaser is not a simple effect, but rather a preset that has different levels. In most cases, a preset has a fixed value, for example for color or position. The value is then fixed. Three colors are shown for this preset. And by the three pink dots, I can see that this is a multi-level preset. That means a phaser. For example, a moving phaser can be quickly created in the phaser editor. I choose my lamp type and can choose between an absolute or a relative phaser. I choose the absolute value which also saves the starting position. This cross symbolizes the pan and the tilt axis for a moving light. With one click I place the first point in the middle. If I now create a second point, I can set the end position of my phaser. I have all sorts of setting options down here. First of all, I slow down my phaser with a speed encoder. I now store it at tilt move and label it. When I click on this wave symbol, a face bar with all selections of phases appears directly on the right. I choose the selection tool again and select the start and the end point. Now I can use the rotation tool to make a pawn move out of it. With the move tool I can then position and enlarge them precisely. With the handle tool on the left side, I can edit the curve. With this tool, I can edit the curve and create a circle out of the two points. It works similarly to the tools of a modern drawing program. And just like a preset, I can now start this phaser. The transition is very jerky, but since it is a preset, I can directly enter a fade time. so I can easily set an absolute or relative point in the grid. But only the selected points are processed. In this software version, I only can create position phases by using the grid. Individual steps can be deleted.
I create a simple dimmer phaser by setting my starting value, in this case 0%. If I save that now, I would have a preset with 0%, but I like to have a second step on this preset, and for that there is a step controller right below. I add a second step and can now enter the needed value directly. I can also enter a face value now. I don't like the face, so I'm just going to face down here and set my value directly. Here I can also set the transition. I can see that the entry transition 0 was only addressed for the second step. I make some space on the desktop and bring the step bar. Here I can select those steps that I like to work on. Another important function is to create a phaser from presets. The individual steps should therefore be carried out from the values of the presets. For this I choose my lamps and my color preset red. I create a second step with a step controller. To insert a second color preset, I have to press the integrate button. This appears when I hold down the MA button on the add button. I press integrate and can now choose my green preset as a second step. I still set the transition to zero and save this phaser. I call the phaser and save it into an executor. The phaser will now run from the executor and the values come from the color presets. Now I choose my spots again and the color preset for blue. If I now save this to the green preset with store and merge, my color will also change in the executor. A very important function for me. I choose my steps again and then the phaser with the color change. To add another step, I have to select the third step by using the step control and can then add another color with integrate. And can then also change the transition. I only have to add the new step to the phaser with merge And this step is also carried out from the running queue. The stomp function should be also mentioned. I choose my moving lights and find the stomp function by holding the MA key. So I press stomp and then on the attribute I like to stomp the phaser. The phaser stops automatically and keeps the current value. If I press clear, the phaser will be executed again because it runs out of the sequence. The flyout is probably the best known standard effect that consists from several attributes. The effect needs four simple presets. Lower position, upper position, lamp off and lamp on. The first step is lower position and lamp off. Now the second step Top position and lamp on Select both steps Since I now have two attributes in my phaser but only want to set the dimmer I now choose the filter for dimmer phaser and set the transition to zero I also can 
switch on and off the attributes I like to work on on these checkboxes. Filter back to normal and now the speed to 20. And for that the rewind is faster in the dark, I change the width for step 1 to 30. Now I change the selection order with M8 rigs and the face to 360 degrees. I give a gobo and the flyout is ready. If you like to know more about phasers or any other topics for the Granny May 3, please contact me over my homepage feeds.de and subscribe yourself for one of my online courses. My name is Feeds. Thank you for watching this video and if you like then subscribe this channel.